So here's my TP-Link EAP 660 HD. I've been using it for about a month now. It's been uh, it's been working flawlessly after a few issues. Um, now the issues were not related to the device itself. It was an issue with my switch. For some reason, it wasn't properly doing power correctly. Um, so I manually assigned uh, the power um, to the configuration, the web, inter the web interface. Um, anyway, just a quick little look at that. I'm going to see if I can pause this and then uh, do a brief look at the the web interface. This is currently in use and standalone mode. So that does work. All right, so if you're setting this up for the first time, it is set to DHCP by default. You could use an application like Thing or you could log into your router's web interface and look at the devices. I've already set up a password and everything. I'm not walking you through the setup procedure. I'm just going to show you the um, what it's like in standalone mode. You can use an Amata controller if you would like. Um, you could buy one or you could host one yourself. Uh, it's pretty useful. It has pretty, uh, lo lots of good features. Um, but I'm going to just do a brief rundown. As you can see here, it's been in use for 46 days. A few clients set up. Well, I mean, not clients. Three on 2.4 gigahertz. Three on 5 gigahertz. I'm not going to get too in-depth on it. You can block devices based on users. You also can do uh, bandwidth control per device in standalone mode. This is for enabling or disabling the 5 gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz radio. You can uh, adjust transmit power. 26 is the maximum, 7 is the minimum. It does appear to have a portal that you can set up. I guess, like, you agree to these terms, etc. I did play around with that briefly, but... Um, I uh, shut that off. You do a local password. External, you can use a radius server. Um, you can set up VLANs. MAC filtering. Set up a schedule. You can do um, schedules based on different SSIDs and or just the entire access point. You can like set up the Wi-Fi to shut off at midnight kind of thing. Um, I'm not sure what band steering is. I'd have to look that up. You can set up QS, quality of service. And this is once again just in standalone mode. Rogue AP detection. I'm surprised it picked up the shop, considering that's like 300 feet away and in a steel building. Um, so I'm not getting too in depth in this.
you can set it up what devices are able to connect and log into the device. You can set it up by Mac or VLAN. LED control just turns the light on and off. Locate will make it flash, which will be useful, you know, if you were looking for an AP in a building and you know there's like 50 APs in the entire building kind of thing. I know what SSH is, but I'm not sure what it would be used for in this instance. Um, supports SNMP. If I remember correctly, that's Simple Network Management Protocol, I think. Um, yeah, and here's the account management. Username, okay. Here's where you can set up a controller. You do a cloud, or you can do a locally hosted one if you would like. Ah, yes, yes. Time settings, very important. Reboot, reset. Backup and restore. So, you do any advanced configurations. Create a backup, save it elsewhere. Firmware update. Um, it does look like you have to do this manually. Anyway, this is a very brief rundown tutorial of the interface when it's in standalone mode. Um, from what I've read, if you use a Mata controller, you will no longer be able to access it as a standalone device. If anyone has any questions or concerns, feel free to ask. I will do my best to answer, but as you can see, I've done a very basic configuration. I just wanted to replace 802.11 uh, AC device that came with my internet service provider. The LAN port is a 2.5 gigabit LAN port, but it is currently a 1 gigabit because um, that's what the switch is that I'm plugged into. Anyway, thanks for watching.